Hi everybody, Paul Gallagher. What I wanted to cover in this video is um, it's basically the journey through uh, me converting this particular picture in, into black and white, <clears throat> the black and white journey effectively. Obviously it was a raw file, so it's all in color. And, and how, how can we use colors in this one to convert it to black and white? And what is the basic process that I follow all the time? Um, many people know I've, I've been a great fan of black and white for a very long time and I'm also a great fan of Scotland so I've got a lot of black and white pictures of Scotland and this is of Sligacan, um, this is the River Sligacan that goes down to Loch Sligacan and we've got on the Isle of Skye and we've got the Coolins in the distance so it's a beautiful spot and there's plenty to explore so this is the raw file and if we look at the histogram at the top right hand corner we can see that the highlights are in Okay, and the shadows are in. So all the information in the file is the the reason why I was exposed slightly to the left is because this corner, the right hand top corner of the image, was getting threatened by sunlight was breaking from the behind the clouds every so often, and so it became a little bit of an issue. So I, I hedged my bets and kept underexposed to make sure that I kept them highlights in, and they are the safe. Um, so what? How do we begin? What do we start with this image? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to just start by evening it out forget that we're going to make it black and white for this moment in time let's just even things out okay now we can see that most of the bottom of the image is quite dark and there's not much tonal variation there now that is going to be a challenge throughout one the converting it and making it into a black and white image and that's one of the reasons why i chose this particular picture to show you how you can get three dimensionality how you can get the tease the tones out in the image itself now we've got a gap on the right hand side let's start with exposure Let's nudge it across. I know it's going to break the top right hand corner, but exposure works on the central band of the of the histogram, which you can see up there. Okay, and so it drags everything to the right. So let's work with exposure. Let's tease it to the right. We can sort out the highlights in the sky in a minute. So that's really going to help us with this dark area in the foreground here. So now these have gone really, really bright. It's common sense for us to go to highlights and try and tease them back a little bit. And a way to do this, work with your background here, white. Okay, you have like a standard grey background, which is like a default. It doesn't really help to tell you where your whites are. If you right click and put it on white, then you'll understand what it's going to look like on a piece of paper. Okay, so I always work with a white background. Okay, so we can see that the edge of that's quite clean now. So we'll leave that for now. Let's tease out some of the shadows. Okay, now one thing this is going to do and I'm sure most of you are saying it, is that the image is looking flat. Yeah, I know it's looking flat, but we've got to get the baseline kind of tones or colours tones right here before we move any further. Right, what I'm going to do next is, now that's looking pretty flat, and the histogram, if you see, is just moved from on the left-hand side, more of it's in the middle. So now if we apply clarity, we can start to separate out mid-tones. Okay, and there we go. Now, I know this is really dark here. We'll manage that later on. Now, using colours to convert to black and white, this particular file isn't a good candidate for that, okay? There's some kind of, you know, yellows in there and browns. There's some greens, but the yellowy green. There's a slight tinge of cyan and blue up there, but there's no real colours for us to play with. And as I mentioned a minute ago, it's a tricky file. So we can't really rely on colours for this. They're not going to help us. We're going to have to get the separation within the photograph itself purely by making adjustments, localizing global adjustments. That's what we're going to have to do. So what I'm going to do with this image now, I'm going to open it up in, in Photoshop and then we'll convert to black and white. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop. Okay, I've got a layers palette open. I'm going to go straight in now and click on a new adjustment layer and come down to black and white. Okay, now as I mentioned, there's nothing here worth playing with. If you move the reds around, it's hardly going to do anything at all. Yellows, you might get a little shift in the sky. Greens, there's no real greens to talk of. There's nothing that this is going to help us with. So what we're going to have to do is, we're going to have to do it ourselves. We're going to have to literally just do it ourselves. Okay, leave it as standard as it is and leave that there. So we'll just close that off and get rid of it. Now, the one thing I am going to do at this particular stage is I'm going to make a stamp layer because we've got a data layer here. We can't put that back into Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm going to make a stamp layer. I'm going to go layer. I'm going to come down to hover over merge visible. I'm going to hold down the alt key and click on merge visible. 
And what happens is we now have a layer here, okay, a data layer. And that means that we could go now from filter to camera raw filter. And now we're back in Adobe Camera Raw. So now we're back in Adobe Camera Raw, we can look at it and we can think, right, what can we do with the image? One thing, the one of the most difficult things about black and white. So when you convert to black and white and you've just left the color version behind, you go to black and white, which is what we've just done. The image can sometimes look particularly lifeless, particularly with an image like this that has no real color information to adjust or play with prior to converting to black and white. And so we've got an image now that looks, it's just flat, it looks like newsprint. And what we want to do is try and make it look three dimensional, try and make it look like kind of, you know, we were stood there, we could almost hear the water cascading down. And to do that, now we, I know we've balanced some of it out before, but even though we've gone to black and white now, we've still got a good bit of work to do. It's not balanced out enough. It, it's the, 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 some areas of the image, this middle area here looks flat, this looks too dark. It's all mid tony and it's going to look worse before it looks better. Because what we're going to have to do is carry on once again with exposure. We'll nudge that across, okay? Then some of the deeper shadows down here, we're going to have to nudge them across even more to bring the foreground out. And then once again, we're going to have to go back to clarity, okay? We're not damaging the file by doing this. We're just having to work on the tones. Now, one area of this image that always bothers me, it always has done, and it's it's about balance now. We're starting to look at balance in the image. The left-hand side of the image here has got dark tones and stuff that go around here. This here, these rocks here that run around here look absolutely flat mid-grey. Okay, now in reality, they're lovely, a kind of Scottish granite, but here they look mid-grey. So we're gonna to have to do that locally. We've almost kind of, for the moment, expended what we're gonna do with, with global adjustments. So I'm gonna get go up here and get the adjustment brush. I'm gonna click on mask, and I'm just gonna draw in, brush in that particular area. Okay, just round here, just them mid-tone rocks that look pretty ugly. Okay, so just come, come round there. Reduce the size of your brush with your square bracket keys. And it was just that rock there as well was a bit of a culprit. Over here wasn't too bad, but certainly round here it looked terrible. And this is all this is is a process of evening the tones out in the image. I'm going to uncheck mask there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to clarity because it's all mid tones. I want to separate out the tones. And we can see them kind of come into life now. But they still, although we've got separation of the tones, they still look light. So I'm going to get the exposure slider after we separated the tones and bring the exposure down. And now what we're starting to see now, maybe some whites in there just to give it a bit more contrast and a little bit more clarity. And what we can see now is the tonality of these now coming around here is far better. If we go back to where we started, we can see the flat greys, but now the whole thing's starting to look three dimensional, which is great. Next thing, the sky. Now, and, and the mountain in the distance, the coolings. It's very, very tempting with black and white to look at this mountain thing. It doesn't look very grand. I mean, it's not very three-dimensional. It has, hasn't got that kind of punchy nature to it. And, it. and it shouldn't have, because it's a long, long way away from, from where I'm stood. And if I try to make this look as contrasty as the foreground here, it's going to bring it forward. And it's going to make it look closer to me. And by doing that, we're going to lose recession in the photograph. It will be ruined. We need to keep it there so it looks like a picture that you're looking through. Okay. So command zero. We're going to do some work on, on the uh, the sky and the mountain, but I'm not going to push it too far. Just a little adjustment. Let's uh, reset local selections there or settings, should I say. Get a, get a mask and a brush. And let's brush over. Okay, we'll just take in there. And we're going to come down just to the edge there. It doesn't have to be accurate at all. We're just looking at tones and balancing things out. Uncheck mask. Okay, and I'm just going to add a little bit of clarity. This clouds are mid-grey. That'll help with the clouds. And also the top of the mountain a little bit. But you can still see this tone. The total variation there is less than here. And that's exactly the way it should be. Perfect. Right. <clears throat> Next thing. Um, the shadows in the foreground here are just too heavy. So we're going to get a new brush, reset, selective edits, 
and then I'm going to brush in here. I'll just click me mask so I know where I'm going. That's it. Just the darkest parts. Okay, just the darkest parts here. Go around here and go around there. So let's just basically making a selection with a mask. That's effectively what we're doing. I'll uncheck the mask there. Okay, then I'll come down to the adjustments and I will bring out the shadows. Okay, which is good. And then let's tease the whites across just until it starts peaking. Now we can see it just peaking on the cascade there. So we'll keep that back there. So we know <clears throat> the foreground of the image now is starting to really even out. Now what I want to do is I want to go back into Photoshop because when I'm back in Photoshop, I want to use the lasso tool and curves. And what's the adjustment? All the adjustments come through. There we are, fantastic. Okay, so now we're back in Photoshop. Let's kind of make an assessment of what we intend to do in Photoshop. Okay, well, don't we don't want to just dive in and have a go at things. Let's see what we intend to do. There's a number of different things. Um, this little kind of rapid of water here is not as bright as this, and it's a great anchor point in the foreground of the image. In fact, this pool of water here in the main cascade this certainly this pool here is not bright enough but we know that that little cascade there's on the edge of white so we need to leave that alone but kind of trying to get some more separation get more shape muscularity in what's happening in there the next thing is this bit of water i want that to look like a sheen it, 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 like the, the lights coming from the sky and it's sheening as the water cascades it wasn't a particularly very long exposure but there was a sheen in it and that's kind of been lost in translation so we need to bring that about and then when we've done that we need to do some work on the edges of the image just to give it that just to hold the eye in because when we brighten this part here these tones at the edge are going to go a little bit paler. These tones of these rocks, I know we've worked on them, but they're still a little bit pale at the edge. Also is the sky at the, the right-hand side at the top. So I'm going to get a lasso tool, a feather, about 100 roughly. And I'm going to start by selecting here, down here. I'm just going to select around the white area, okay? Hold down the Alt key so you can select off the edge of the canvas and go back up and round to there, okay? So I've made a selection and I'm going to use curves here. Now, you may be asking why are you using curves and not an adjustment brush? Well, the reason being is that curves is, is a different tool. It's a powerful tool. Um, but with these, I know some of these whites will be close to the edge. And I want to alter tonality in them without risking the highlights. So if I, I know that if I leave that point up there at the very, very top pegged and don't touch it while I'm working on these waters, I can alter the tonality and I'm never going to pop the whites. The whites are going to stay intact. So starting with here, we want this to kind of match that in some way, but certainly not be lost in the shadows. So let's push up the white so we can get it to stand out. We can see it standing out. And if we look closely at it here, you see there's a grey area around the outside. Well, I want the whites to stay white because they're kind of in keeping with the one on the right-hand side. But I want kind of the surroundings to be darker. So if I come to the curve line here and drag them back down, we'll see the surroundings going darker, but the water staying as bright. If we click the eye on the layer there, on and off, we can see we've gone from that to that. Okay, so quite a big adjustment. Well, quite a small adjustment, but a big effect. Okay, I'll close that off now. I'm going to do the same to this body of water here, okay? Now, when it's really dark there, just to the right of my cursor, I'm going to leave it as it is, okay? Because I know that when I make an adjustment, that will go too dark with a curve. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go to there, okay? You notice the, the, the selections aren't accurate. They don't have to be accurate. It's just, I'm just altering tones to tease the eye there. I'm not being accurate on every single part of the water being cascaded. It's just a general adjustment on tones. Let's go into curves again. We'll push the highlights a little bit, okay? Like that, and then we'll bring down the darks. Okay, so now we've got, now we switch the eye on and off, we've got huge difference in that. And now it's punctuating the foreground, which is great. I think the one that we just did down here still looks a little bit dull. So I'll double click on that there and open it up. And what I will do is I'll pull the push the whites even further at it. And now we can see it's standing out more. Okay, let's leave that now. Click on the uppermost layer. 
let's draw our attention now to the surface of the water here okay not particularly that small area but this area here is very important i want to make once again a rough selection i'm just going to come round round the edge come down here and maybe just kind of cascade down there and down there okay notice i'm staying away from the waterfall that brightest cascade there that's the one that was on the edge so i, don't, I can't go near that and now all i want to do is give the impression of the, the the moving water picking up brightness from the sky so i will just push the curve line there and take it up and take it up and almost look as if you're going too far because you're going to peg the darker areas back i'll do that and then bring this down here okay let's see a little bit more maybe that's nice okay let's knock it on and off before after so we've got this kind of real sheen going on which is fantastic now i'm going to close that off now then um the edges of the image i generally use a feather of about 100 pixels hold down the alt key and i'm just going to come down the edge here this is just to hold it's just to dull the edge down to keep the eye away from the edge of the image tease the eye into the photograph itself it's not a vignette by the way a vignette is a pretty sort of like you know a sort of an oval shape and uh it could be overused vignettes. I just this is just purely to manage the tonality at the edge of the black and white image. I'm gonna come down, that's nice. Okay. If you look at the top up here, this edge here, when I switch the eye on and off, you can see the tones just being contracted and just being held in. Just enough. Notice once again I'm working with a white background. Okay, let's come down this edge. Not so much at the top of the sky there. And not so much there but certainly here that's where we're going to start going inwards and then we can taper off there because the lower part of the image is particularly dark it doesn't need to be any darker going to curves click on the top corner okay and the reason why i'm pulling on the top corner it's dulling down it's, it's taking the white pixels first and pulling all the tones down if you pulled started pulling here then if there's any really pale pixels at the edge of the image you're locking them in position if you leave it as it is so start with the upper part of the curve line now the lower part we don't want to do too much we want to come across here to there to there okay L lower left hand corner is really dark so we don't need to do that and one same thing again top right hand corner just bring it down it won't be as noticeable certainly not on a video here but it is just bringing down them lower tones now, <clears throat> everything's coming together. I do like to do one final check on Adobe Camera Raw, just in case I need to you know, alter the midtones with clarity or something like that. So we're gonna make another stamp layer. We're gonna go layer, hold down the Alt key, and merge visible. Okay, so we've got our stamp layer at the top. Then I'm gonna go filter and camera raw filter. Okay. Now let's get it into Camera Raw. Here we are, right back into Adobe Camera Raw. And we can see the kind of journey with the image has really, has really come about. It, look, it looks absolutely fab. What I think we should do now is, let's just check what our blacks are, okay? So I'm just sliding them to the left and we can see that peak's gone up there. Now we've got to be careful, sometimes a black point isn't helpful. That's a little bit too heavy. Don't forget to look at it visually rather than just numbers. It's important that you get it looking the way you want it let's go across so the whites are in the top corner there and if we want it what i might do is just add a little bit more exposure just to make it shine a little bit more and when you do that some of the mid-tones look a bit flat and then you could just a tiny little bit of clarity just to make it look three-dimensional that looks brilliant if we knock it on and off now we can see before and after i'll see the foreground the shine around here the shadow detail and after and it looks very three-dimensional now if we go back we can see it's got all the tones in it that we want i'll okay that now that i'm quite happy with that i'm really really happy with it and i wonder if we can reopen the original now that's where we started a few minutes ago okay so it's it's a process of evening things out of understanding and deciding what you're going to do before you do it and slowly but surely do that and but build it up gradually and then when you build it up gradually you'll end up with an image like this it's a three-dimensional it's a punchy image of black and white you can do obviously you can do high key low key soft and this for me in this rugged scottish environment was definitely going to be a punchy image thanks a million for listening